Hi, welcome back. Sorry I'm a little bit late with today's video, I've had a lot on. I've moved house, I'm in a new office, new velvet chair, new year, but we still need to get those pesky January exams out of the way. Um, I just want to thank, before I start, the new subscribers we've had on the channel this month. So, big thanks to Carly Eddy, Hannah Maguire, Roshni Shazad, Ace Hardy, Giacomo Casanova and Andrea Orsa. I really appreciate it, we're a fledgling channel, so it's really great to have some new people on board. Um, today I didn't have many suggestions on what people wanted from their exams, but a common query I get um, at work is really about gobbits. Now in the real world, these are called close reading passages. My institution has always called them gobbits, I've never really got why. But essentially this is when you have an exam task with a passage of text that you have to interpret. And it's a really different skill from essay writing, so I thought I'd give you my five top tips on how to tackle gobbits and some advice on how to revise for them as well. Okay, so let me pull a gobbit up for you on the screen so you can see what we're dealing with. And this is a close reading for most of the, the real world. Um, <coughs> now, in my institution, gobbits can be quite short. They're about 15% uh, each, I think. So they're really, really tiny. They may be different at your institution. Just check a past paper and compare this against it. But the principles are really the same. So when you're tackling a close reading passage, I would say my number one tip is to stick to the passage. Sounds really obvious, but when you're stressed and you're in an exam, it kind of goes out the window. So when you're planning to do a gobbit passage, annotate the passage. Don't bullet point a plan, don't do a spider diagram, don't do any of the stuff that you would normally do for an essay. Annotate the passage because you want to be really sure that you don't have any blind spots. If you've missed a sentence or two, that could really hurt you with your mark a little bit because it suggests you don't understand what's going on there. You probably do, you're just stressed because you're in an exam. So my first tip would be to annotate the passage as you plan. It's the quickest way, it's the best way to ensure coverage. Okay, tip number two, how on earth do you write an introduction for a close reading passage? Well, my second tip would be context in. To give an introduction that's relevant to the passage, setting up what's going on and showing your understanding before you start will let you write more clearly when you're writing the main body of your answer. But it will also really avoid some of the traps of writing an essay. So intuitively, when you're writing an introduction, what you might want to do is set up an argument. Um, and you don't really need an argument for a gobbit. You need to follow the passage, show you understand how it fits the text as a whole, and then draw conclusions at the very end. So you don't need that sense of argument. A good example would be, let's have a look at this gobbit together. So this is a section from East Glissa's Oristaya. I'm gonna pull it up on the screen for you. And so <clears throat> when you're thinking about giving context in, for a dramatic performance, it might be who's speaking, to who, and why, and anything significant about their relationship or the impact of this conversation. So for example here, this is Agamemnon. He's speaking to Clytemnestra, offspring of Leda, his wife. And this is their first reunion since Agamemnon's come home from Troy. And he's been at Troy for 10 years. You might talk for a dramatic piece about what's going on on stage. You might mention that you know Cassandra is there in the background as a silent character. And there's three or four sentences, really snappy, just to set up the context of the passage. That's the way to do an introduction. Don't worry about crafting an argument for a close reading passage. Show that you understand what's happening. Tip number three is to give enough context to enhance your understanding. So concise context. And I've said this before when we've talked about essays, it's really easy in an exam, and trust me, I know it because I've done it, to, to spew facts to show that you've revised. I mean, for my A-level history exam, I remembered all the different data on the corn and agriculture figures for the Weimar Republic. It was totally useless. It didn't help my grade at all. When I think about including context into things like close reading passages, Think of the Brazilian salt man, okay? It should be the seasoning in your answer that makes it better. It shouldn't be the bulk of the meal, okay? A lot of what you're trying to do in a close reading is responding to the text in front of you and your context is that nice bit of seasoning that shows, ooh, and I know why this is relevant and I know how this fits in. 
So let's have a look at an example in this close reading passage together. So if we were to look at very, very middle, do not in women's fashion pamper me, do not as if I were a barbarian gape at me with prostrations and loud cries. Okay, so your context can be, you know Clytemnestra has done a really heavy handed uh, welcome home to him. He's telling us what Clytemnestra has just done. And your context might be in performance, this could be fulfilled or frustrated. So in performance, Clytemnestra may well have been over the top, but Clytemnestra could equally have given a very demure performance. So Agamemnon could be right or wrong here. He could be exaggerating or not. So it's not necessarily the case that Clytemnestra is the ridiculous one. Uh, another good bit of context might be from here, do not strew my path with raiment. So here it's the famous red tapestry scene. Um, and your knowledge of what's happening on stage is helpful, helpful context. You sprinkle a little bit in and you can mention in a couple of sentences why it's significant. So this is of course Clytemnestra um, trying to morally trap Agamemnon by getting him to commit hubris. Nice keyword, shows your understanding of the period. Uh, by stepping on the tapestries that his daughter Iphigenia presumably made as she was a wealthy princess in the household. This is poignant because Agamemnon killed Iphigenia and that is a main source of conflict between the couple, full stop. So, another key tip when you're thinking about doing this for exams and to revise, I really recommend doing close reading passages timed, even if you do them on their own, is getting the knack, commentary, not copying. So what you don't want to do is have to write extended quotes to make your point. If you want to include a full sentence, I would practice doing it like this. So say I wanted uh, your speech matches my absence for you have drawn it out at length. You can put your square brackets dot 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 length and put in this line Agamemnon um, insults Clytemnestra etc etc so you've given yourself space to just get straight to your point in the, in the time given because the marker will have the passage in front of them so you just need to give enough information to show what you're referring to if you're in the exam and you catch yourself writing out big chunks of the passage that's not a good use of your time so you really need to be careful with that and practice some of the passages too okay tip number five how to write a conclusion so for conclusions, you can give context out, but I would do this in a slightly different way to the way that you wrote your introduction. So for context out, um, mentioning the impact of the scene. So you can say what happens immediately after, but actually what's the point of the scene? What does it add to the play in this case? Or what does it add to the epic? Or what does it add to the collection of poems that you read in Bagatullus or what have you? So what's its contribution? Um, and for this, our, our kind of context out might be, this sets up the scene in which Agamemnon enters the house and destroys the tapestries and Clytemnestra makes the choice to kill him. Without this scene, we might not have as much empathy for Clytemnestra's decision because Agamemnon shows himself to be a very unlikable character. I, help that, I hope that that was helpful for you and do let me know how you got on. Closed readings are always tough. They're something that people tend to struggle with, but if you practice it and you get the knack, they're a skill all of their own and they take some of the memory test out of the equation with exams too. Okay, let me know how you get on. I'll do a couple more videos on exams and then we'll be moving on to a new series. So let me know what you would like to see. I can do a new series on Greek tragedy explained or I could do something on classics and jargon busting. So things like the Hellenistic period or the second sophistic, terms that get thrown around a lot but are quite difficult to unpick. You let me know what you want to see. Sorry for being late today. Another one of my projects is creating illustrations of the ancient world to sell online. I'll leave a link in the description below. So far we've got vintage travel posters of the Colossus at Rhodes, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, and the Lighthouse at Alexandria. I'm aiming to complete the other four of these seven ancient wonders this month. So have a look on Redbubble and please like and share and pass it on. Thanks.